There we go. Cool. I'll just give it a few seconds just to get the audience, you know, build up the anticipation. <laughs> I might... <laughs> Is, it here? is this on now? Yeah, it's streaming now. Is it working on there? Yep. Yeah. All good. Sweet. <clears throat> okay, do you want, does someone want to watch? Can someone watch it and we'll see if we've got audio? Someone do on your phone, because I'll look around. Don't worry, just ask in the comments. Can you just read out any comments that come through? Can you hear me, guys, those that are watching? Yeah, here it is. No, nothing coming through yet. No. Just give me a minute, guys, just to make sure the audio is working. Yes. Boom. Yep, okay. it does sound good. Yep, excellent. Thanks for watching, everyone. Welcome to this live stream. I'm here at Horizon Aquatics in Darlington, England. Beautiful town. Recommend it. Um, more importantly, Horizon Aquatics is a aquascaping specialist store. Uh, it's quite new, about nine months old. And I've been wanting to come here for a long time. I think we had a workshop but six months or so ago, but with COVID, etc., obviously we had to cancel that. So the next best, the next best thing is to do a, a live stream for you guys in this beautiful, I was a, pan around, there we go. Uh, I was a Highline 200. So we're gonna obviously aquascape this. We're gonna take you through the whole process step by step Unfortunately, there's no one on hand to answer any questions unless any of my lovely moderating team are there. So please feel free to ask them later on the replay and I'll have a look through and see if I can answer them. But yeah, we're gonna have great fun. I wanna give a special thanks to James and Nicole for inviting me up. Also to Mark Goodwin, Geordie Scaper. Check him out, his own YouTube channel. is about to reach 1,000 subscribers. Let's see if we can get him there in the next hour or so shall we yep that'll make come us, on that'll make us day and yeah i'm gonna have great fun i'm really excited we've got some plants that i very rarely use I've, i'm gonna do a, a completely different aquascape completely out of my comfort zone and i think it's a great opportunity for me to do that in someone else's tank so thanks to james and nicole for letting me play around for you <laughs> and yeah we're gonna have good fun all the plants i think almost all the plants are from tropica we're using tropica aquarium soil we're using some Decorative gravel, which we'll go through in more detail. Got some epic wood. Let's go. Yep. Enjoy. <clears throat> so, first things first, let's have a little chat about the aquarium itself. Most of you may know that I am an ambassador for Awaze, and the reason for that is that I do absolutely love their products. Some of you may have seen my unboxing video. Uh, of the Biomaster 850 Thermo. And actually the Biomaster was the reason um, that I contacted Awaze and asked if they wanted to sponsor me. And then one thing led to another, and now here I am aquascaping one of their beautiful aquariums. So the Highline 200, 200 litres, a premium quality aquarium. You know, it, German engineering, comes completely built, you don't build it yourself, you don't build the cabinet yourself, it's all really, really top quality stuff. Maybe Mark can get some close-ups yeah. of the detailing and things like that. Really, really nice composite materials, so there's no exposed woods, everything is going to be completely waterproof, so if you do accidentally spill water, which obviously many of us do with aquariums, you're not going to get any accidental ingress of water, which can cause swelling and things like this, so just rest assured, very high quality piece of kit. Now one of the unique features to the Awaze High Lines is this dry weir. So what we have, this is actually a, this no water comes in through here. So this is all of the equipment, all the electrical cables, the filter outlets, they all come out of here. And then we have a drilled hole here for our filter inlet there. What this means is there's no cables running down the back of the aquarium. So we can have the aquarium right back against the wall so if your space is limited, your living space is limited, then obviously you can make the most of it by having your aquarium shoved all the way back right against the wall. It also means there's no kind of ugly distracting pipes or anything like this. It's all kind of hidden away in this black background. This comes as it is, it's pure black. So you don't have to put any of your own black background on, no air bubbles, anything like that. Super premium, high quality. So, Got a detachable lid, so you don't have to kind of flap it back. You can take it right off for scaping if you want to, so we'll do that today. 
And then we'll go inside the cabinets, push the release doors, and then we have our filtration here. This is the Biomaster 250 Thermo, complete with the quick release pre filter, the built in heater, various filter media inside there. And then this comes up through, as you can see, there's the filter inlet there, and then the outlet comes up through this dry weir and then out of the top with an adjustable nozzle. So, really good bit of kit. And I'm getting a Highline 400, so twice the volume of this, hopefully very soon for my discus, which I'm very excited about. Okay, let's do some scoping. I don't actually know what I'm going to do. I do, I'm joking. <laughs> um, okay, first things first, I think it's wise to put the wood in first. And the reason for that, it is a very big, is that going to stay there? So hardscaping, any of you that watch many of my videos will know I always go on about hardscape and how it is uh, the backbone of the layout. So if we start off with a strong hardscape, we can quite easily create a high impact aquascape. If you imagine only having really small pieces of wood, small rocks, etc. in here, they're not going to give you much impact. So you're really going to have to rely on the plants to create that impact. That's going to take a long time for those plants to grow in, and it's just not going to—it's not going to look as natural either. So my recommendation is to always start off with a very high impact hardscape. And what I've done here is I've—I have to say, Horizon Aquatics have got some amazing hardscape materials here. I had a good rummage around, and I found this beautiful piece of wood here, which just happens to. So we did a water test as well to make sure it didn't float. So I'm very confident, I'm not blaming <laughs> well, you Nicole if it, if it floats, um, I'm confident that it's going to sink so we'll put that in now and then what we'll do is we'll put the substrate around it because it's just going to be easier to work that way. So a lot of the time I'll put the substrate in first and then put the hardscape in but in this case because the hardscape is so big and dominant I'm going to put this in first and then, hard, and then substrate around that. So pop this in, it kind of only goes one or two ways. And there's a good start there. And then we work our way down. In fact, I'm going to use that first and then I'm going to put the substrate in and then I'm going to put the smaller pieces of wood in. Yes, great right idea, George. Okay, so now we're going to use our substrate. So for those that don't know, this is Hugo Kamashi XXL dogwood. Is that right, Nicole? Yeah, yeah, XXL. Yeah. XXL. Uh, I think this will probably retail at... Around about, I think they're like 49 right now. So about £50, pounds, yeah. yeah, which I think is good value for such a big piece of wood. And most of it sinks straight away, so this is a massive bonus. You might, you might leach some tannins, so... After some time, your water might turn like a little bit of a tea colour. You could mitigate this with big water changes and or chemical filtration like carbon or purigen, etc. But water changes is my preference, especially in a new setup anyway. Okay, so that's the main kind of piece of wood in. Now it's time to add some substrates. Most of you know that I am also supported by Tropica. I love their soils. I use them in almost every aquascape I create these days. And that is because it's a proven performer feeds the plant roots, helps to buffer the water as well, so it will tend to kind of lower the pH if you have hard water. Normally it keeps it about 6.5, and this creates a real great home for the plant roots, promotes plant health, and promotes actually the whole health of the whole system, because the, the actual granules themselves are very porous. Uh, this uh, gives uh, bacteria uh, a great opportunity to colonise the, the soil as well, as opposed to like a regular sand, which is, isn't great for bacteria colonisation. So there's that to think about. Uh, it doesn't need pre-rinsing, and it will last a long time. The nutrient content will last a long time, especially if you add liquid fertilisers regularly. I always, always promote this. I always say use a nutrient-rich substrate like a soil. In addition, use decent liquid fertilisers every day. What that means is the plant is going to be always well fed, never run out of food. It can take in nutrients through its roots, through the soil, and also through its leaves, through the liquid fertiliser. 
So I'll give a quick uh, plug to my podcast. I did a, an episode on liquid fertilisers very recently, so check that out if you want to know more about liquid fertilisers. Good. So let's put our soil in. I need some scissor. I think I have some here. Yeah. So what I'm actually going to do is take, slide this forward, and the idea is I'm going to run the soil like in a diagonal line across here, and then I'm going to put cosmetic sand in the front, and we're going to create a very, very different layout to what I normally do. So I'm really excited about this one. So this is nine litres, probably could do a nine litre bag and a three litre bag. This is actually the powder type. It is exactly the same product as the normal type, it's just the grain size is smaller. And yeah, nothing, don't need to rinse it, just add it straight away. No need to put a base layer in it, no need to cap it with sand or anything. Just literally use it on its own. Super easy. Now, there's plenty of room in there to plant. We might need to use one more bag, but we might get away with just the one. Yeah, we probably need two actually. So the basically the the thick the the more deep the substrate at the back and the more shallow it is at the front, the greater the sense of depth. So when you're looking at the tank from you know, straight on, if it's really tall at the back, you actually create this optical illusion that the scope is deeper front to back than it really is. So this is a top tip if you want to create this illusion of extra depth. And of course you need enough depth to have enough room for the, for the roots to grow. And actually the more substrate you have, the more soil you have, the more nutrient store it has as well. So that's something to bear in mind. So in, in my, you know, my opinion, in my experience, it's always better to have a little bit too much soil than not enough. But just make sure it's not too deep at the front because you're kind of, you're wasting real estate really. This is like your viewing window. And if you have your soil up here, you're kind of limiting that, that viewing window. So, you know, always start off, me personally, with a, a relatively shallow substrate at the front and then moving up to a deeper substrate at the back. Now the Highline range has this metal kind of band, the stainless steel band around the bottom of the aquarium and then what you can do is you can actually line up the, the kind of surface of your substrate with that line there so you don't actually see uh, any substrate from the front which can arguably look more attractive. It, you know some people prefer to see this than you know a, the front of the soil. So. There we go. Okay, let's put. Probably don't need the whole. Have you got any three litre bags? Um, yeah, there's one there. Yeah, let's use that. Oh, I think that might be enough. You can use a big one if you want. I think, I think it might be a bit too much. Too much. Yeah. So I've got the three litre bag here, and then I'm just going to create a little bit more depth to the back. So let me know in the, or let everyone know where you're from in the comments and the chat. Have a chat amongst yourselves. Uh, if I'm not talking, then you can just, you know, have a little conversation. I think the great thing about these live streams is that we, you know, we can build a, an online community where everyone can, you know, share their, their love of aquascaping, ask questions. I'm sure there's some quite experienced people watching that will be happy to answer any questions to beginners. So don't be afraid. I obviously can't answer any questions right now, but I'm hopeful that there'll be some experienced folk on the chat which can help you out if you need it. So well, don't be afraid to ask. We've got India, London, Staffordshire. Nice. How many, MD, Devon. How many people watching? 271. Nice. Hello everyone. Hello. 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 Hello.
Arkansas, USA, Paris, Switzerland. Awesome. Cool. Okay, so you can see the kind of thing I've gone for here. And now I think the best option is to add our other pieces of wood. And then in front of that, we'll add our cosmetic sand. So working our way down in size of a piece of wood, we're gonna do something like this. And then let's get another piece. Yep. And then I'll add a couple of pieces here. See if you can. Let's, can you see if you can get? Can you, sorry, can you just come here? Something a bit more similar to this, and not this, because this looks a bit kind of man-made and yeah. chopped off. Yeah. So something with a bit more flow. Yeah. And kind of go like this. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The landscape's nearly done. That's the basic premise I'm going for. Now it's time to add our cosmetic gravels and sands. So. This is a really great technique that I don't often use actually in aquascaping and I'm really grateful to have the opportunity to use it today. What we do is we start off with the finest grain sand here. So Hugo Kamishi, five kilo bag. I think this is a unique, I don't know if this is available at all worldwide, but it's definitely highly available in the UK. Yeah, it's big in the UK. So. And there's quite a few different natural, yeah, they do a lot of naturalistic kind of colours and I actually really like it. So, now this probably won't be planted into very much, if at all. You can play, you can plant into plain sand, but it's not as effective as soil. You know, soil is a great nutrient home, a great product all round for the planted aquarium system. So I don't actually recommend using plain sand as a planting media, but it is very effective as a cosmetic product, which is what we're doing here at the front. Someone's saying hi from York. York? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not my ex-wife, is it? <laughs> not to <laughs> blame the story. It's a bit awkward. <laughs> So I have to give a special thanks to everyone who's at Horizon. Everyone's obviously exercising social distancing today. But the guys um, really helped me out massively. They prepared all the plants ready for this workshop, uh, which makes my job super easy. Um, and I'm really grateful for that. So I think we might need another bag, maybe? We might be all right. It's only a thin layer we need. Yeah, it'll be all right, actually. So you can see there's already grains of soil come forward, migrated in front of the, on top of the sand, which is, doesn't look great obviously, but we can tidy that up right at the end. And the top tip, I don't know if anyone knows this, but it's, it actually contains iron and you can get it out with magnets. What? I only saw that, that recently. Yeah. Didn't know, didn't know so that. I think there's, um, you know, like a car aerial that comes out, like a telescopic thing, you can get them with a little magnet on the yeah, end. No. And I've seen people getting them. Yeah. With, with all, like all soil. Yeah. Really. I think so. Mm -hmm. That makes life so much easier, doesn't it? Well, that was like an April Fool, but I'm pretty Maybe. sure it was. Stabbing you on. Yeah, me going. I was really, really excited. Oh, have you yeah. not tried it? Not tried it yet. Yeah. <laughs> but this is a very popular kind of technique in aquascaping: is to have you know, a foreground of, of cosmetic sand or gravel, and then, you know, a soil behind it to plant into. Now, the advantage of having the sand in the front is, is a few reasons. 
number one is not a lot of people, uh, they, they might not want or be able to grow a carpeting plant. So carpeting plants by their nature they tend to be a bit more demanding, they're further away from the light, there's less circulation levels down there, so the CO2 isn't potentially reaching those plants so well. So, you know, people can, it can be a challenge for some people in their plant systems to be able to grow carpeting plants. So, an alternative, uh, a beautiful alternative, is to use the cosmetics and foreground. And another thing about carpeting plants, they are quite high maintenance, they tend to collect a lot of detritus, organic waste. Uh, a lot of them, when they are growing well, tend to grow quite quickly, so they need maintaining more frequently. If you don't maintain them enough, they can tend to overgrow each other and the bottom layers kind of get smothered and they get starved of light and circulation. So carpets can be, you know, high maintenance and a challenge. So, you know, the cosmetics and foreground is a very attractive and viable alternative. So I think it's looking all right so far. Let's just put the light on there so Mark can get a better shot of it. We do have some more pieces of wood which we'll put in soon. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is go down in grain size. So we've got three types of gravel. They're all a similar colour, so they're not going to clash with each other. And this is a top tip. You, if you are kind of grading your gravel, which is what we call, this is what we're doing right now, it's really important to make sure those colours harmonise with each other and don't clash, otherwise it doesn't look natural. And what we're trying to do today is create a kind of natural look at aquarium, a nature aquarium style. So it's you know really important that we don't you know, clash colours. You know, the types of words are the same or very, very similar. When they get wet, they're gonna get much darker and you won't be able to distinguish, hopefully, those pieces of wood. In fact, the whole kind of the whole concept is almost having, making it look like one coherent piece of wood rather than five or six pieces, which we'll end up with. Okay, so now I'm going to go next size up in grain size. So we've got the really fine sand there. And we go up in, the, in one size. Now what we can do here is, do you have like a cup or a glass? Yep. Yeah, thanks mate. <clears throat> so a bit of a heads up, I've already recorded a vlog of the store so you can expect a full uh, shop or store tour of Horizon Aquatics. It's quite a long one, it's going to be about 25 minutes long. So I'll show you all the display scapes, show you all of the livestock. They've got some beautiful betters, beautiful shrimp, beautiful fish, beautiful plants, beautiful hardscape. So you guys, you guys can look forward to that. I'm actually hopeful to edit that on the way home after this. So you never know, you might have a double bonus of two videos in one day, hopefully. Um, so yeah, that's exciting. Good. Okay, so top tip now, you can use a glass instead of just pouring the bag in, because it says making a mess of it, right? <laughs> this gives you a bit more control. And then what we do, just sprinkle this almost randomly around the wood, and it will kind of all make sense soon, hopefully. Probably enough for now, we can always add more later. Better to add too little than too much because it's much harder to take it out of the aquarium, much more easy to put it in. So, just making a real mess here, I do apologise. Yeah, I saw your picture here, right? I don't find that. Okay, so same principle now. These are available from ADA, hundred pounds. Probably does exist. 
and then we add this and just behind and hope you probably see already that hopefully that's looking a bit more kind of naturalistic if you just use one the one texture it tends to look a bit kind of monotonous monochrome Okay, I'm actually going to use my hands because I'm scared of breaking glass, so... Do you want a baby jug? I think I'm okay. I need, yeah, right. to get, I need to I'm put that in underneath. So I'm just going to bring this up underneath the wood. Uh, And this is the sort of thing you can take ages doing if you want it to make it look as natural as possible. But hopefully you get the idea. It just, look, it just looks like, you know, like a beach where the, the constant kind of movement of the water over the sand, it kind of separates it out naturally. And you get this natural grading of the gravel. You know, you start off with the bigger textures and they gradually go down in size, which is what we're trying to achieve today. Okay, there's a distinctive gap here underneath there, so we need to make sure that's filled. Oh, there's loads more during the Facebook live stream now saying hello. That's good, hello everyone. One's my mum. Hello mum. Hello mum. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's good for now. Now we can add our <laughs> and we can add our other pieces of words. Did we check that these sink? No, those were not fine. Right. Uh, So if you're watching guys and you're enjoying this, please hit the like button, that'd be really appreciated. Helps to promote the beautiful world of aquascaping around the world. Um, another video you guys can look forward to is a full in-depth video of my good friend A.D. Myers' Aquascape at 1500 Aquascape. Absolutely stunning, long-term nature aquarium. So I did a kind of uh, vlog style uh, with a roving camera. And then I also did a full recorded load of B-roll and cinematic with my bigger camera, so you can expect a couple of videos from that as well soon. Okay, that's enough self-promotion for a while. Okay, let's go on to some smaller pieces of wood. Now it is darker because we've just, is it, you want to take it all sunk? Yeah, yeah, straight away. Yeah, good. So it does look darker now because we've just done a water test on it. We're just, just adding some more pieces. So hopefully keep in keeping with this coherent kind of layout that we're aiming for. to make sure there's a, there is a gap between the glass and the wood otherwise we'll never be able to clean the glass properly. Okay I'm, I'm really happy with that, it didn't take too long did it, um, but that is testament to not necessarily you know my experience and skill <laughs> but more to do with the availability of great materials so I think um, it's an example of you can use, this This is a super rare wood, you know, most aquarium stores will stock something like this, maybe not the really big pieces, but these small pieces, I think this is a great example of, you can use relatively simple materials, but just more of them to create a more complex layout.
So I am pleased with that. What do you guys think? It's really nice. Yeah, it's great. Nice. Spot on. Well done, George. I don't know what I'd say if you said it was rubbish. No, I'm pleased. Put in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm pleased with that. We can do some more detailing if necessary with the travel, but you get the idea, you get the concept that we're going for. Okay, happy with that. Now it's time to plant. So we have a very interesting selection of plants here. We probably have too many. I do apologise. No, it's fine. But better to have too many than not enough. Anyone that knows me always knows I'm a big fan of planting heavily. Because the reason for that is, I need the ballast, I need the cypress ballast. It's the last one I look at, isn't it? No, it's the cypress. I think it's, is it that one just in front of the. Is it underneath this one? Yeah, underneath. There we are, perfect. Okay. So, a lot of plants that I very, very rarely use. Um, they will probably need CO2 injection. This is Cypress Helferi, and this adds a really beautiful vertical structure to the layout. It will hopefully grow much taller. Hopefully it will actually grow to the surface and almost uh, drape across the surface and create this nice kind of curtain effect, which I think will look beautiful. Um, and it's a really good idea to plant heavily from the start if you can. And now of course we can see that only there's only about 50% of the substrate available for planting. So it's important that we almost cram as many plants as we can into that soil at the back. And ideally you want to have a, a good proportion of those new plants as fast growers. If you think about algae and plants always in competition with each other, the more plants you have, the better that plant growth and the more healthy that plant growth the less algae you get. And this is really important in a new system where the plants, you know, they might struggle for a little while just to get used to their new environment. And this can leave the door open to algae. So for this reason, it's really important to plant particularly heavily uh, with hopefully some easy plants and easy and fast growing plants, because these are going to really help establish the, the balance. Okay, we've got another tall plant here. This is Cryptocorini balanci. Again, this will grow to the surface, hopefully. And I'm doing a technique here, which just really helps to make the, the layout look more naturalistic. We're deliberately mixing the textures together. If you just had one uniform texture of the Cypress, for instance, it would look nice, but it wouldn't look particularly natural. So if we mix the plants, they, they have a similar texture. They, they both have this vertical element, but the, the Cryptocorni balanci has like a, a, um, a hammered leaf, this kind of rippled leaf here. Whereas the Cypress, you can see, has a very straight leaf. And actually the colors will be quite different as well. The Cypress will remain a very bright green, whereas the, the Crypt balanci will very more than likely turn a much darker green, even a brown color. And even the central part, the, the central piece of the leaf here, can you see that? The central, this, this piece here, I don't know if you guys can see that in the video, this will actually turn a red colour with good lighting and nutrients. So this is going to look really great mixed up, hopefully, with the Cypress. Okay, that's two species done. Let's go on to this is a this is a plant I absolutely love, but very rarely get a chance to use. So this is called Mundania Kaysak, and it reminds me of bamboo. And again, this will grow quite tall. And although it isn't a vertical as vertical kind of texture as the balanci and the cypress, it does have, you know, quite a distinct kind of ornamental structure, which I think complements the cypress and the 
and the plant side quite nicely. So, and this is a fast grower, hopefully, so this is going to help with our war against algae, which is particularly common in new setups. So, another a great tip to help combat algae in new setups is large frequent water changes. So, for those that don't know what my schedule is, in a brand new aquascape, I change 50% of the water at least every day. And then every other day, for the first week, sorry, every every day 50% of the water for the first week. For the second week, 50% of the water every other day. For the third week, 50% of the water every third day. And then after four weeks, you can go down to 50% water change once a week. And what that does, it just really does help with this battle against algae. Algae really doesn't like large frequent water changes. And the, the science behind that, I'm not 100% sure on. I think it's just to do with diluting any waste organics. You know, big water changes are always diluting any of the bad stuff. They're also diluting the good stuff. So if you're adding liquid fertilizers, of course, every water change you're doing, you're diluting those liquid fertilizers. But if you, uh, if you, for instance, do the water change at the end of the photo period, those your liquid fertilizer at the beginning of the photo period, and you can ensure that your plants are going to get enough liquid fertilizer. If you're using a, a soil, then actually the dosing of liquid fertilizers, especially in the first few weeks, isn't so essential. If you have very healthy plants to start with, if you're very lucky and have access to really healthy plants from a good quality, you know, good aquascaping store or you know a, a good shop, then those plants are hopefully have, you know start off being really healthy, have good nutrient store. And this is going to give you again a really good start. It's a really, it's really challenging to actually start up a new aquascape with with less than healthy plants because this battle against algae, the algae is always going to win because the plants aren't healthy enough basically to fight off the algae. So I'm just planting as much as I can. I know it it looks it might look quite crammed, uh, but once the aquascape is established. If there's any plants that need to be removed, that, that can happen. But it is really, really good idea to plant heavily from the start. So you can see that we're planting into a, a dry soil. This just makes everything less messy. The plants are going to stay anchored better in a dry soil as well. And then occasionally we might just need to mist the plants to stop them from drying out. So fish in here, we're actually using, we haven't used any yet, but there are a few species of African plants that we're using. So we are going to use some crinum, we're going to use some bulbitis and anubius. All these come from Africa. They're quite a distinctive uh, plant, so I think it'd be nice to keep in keeping with this, this theme and use some African fish. Let us know in the chat what, what kind of African fish species you'd like to see in here. Okay, I think we're good. Looking for those. <coughs> Where's the... Where there we go. Speaking of crinum, this is a beautiful plant. Crinum calamistratum. Absolutely love this. This is one of the first aquarium plants that I ever bought. I actually used it in my first proper aquascape. Um, some of you may have seen it. Mother Microsorum. Basically an aquascape designed around a massive jar of fern. Um, and it's a it's like a bulb it's like a bulb plant almost has a huge nutrient store in here 
and it's so robust you can actually plant it with your fingers. And it's just a beautiful textured leaf. Again, these leaves will grow to the surface eventually. It's a relatively slow grower, but it's just gonna add another vertical texture, but it's got a little bit more detailing in those leaves, so it should look really lovely. Let's pop this one down here. Just looking for gaps now. Okay. So we have quite a lot of open space around here. So we need to do a, uh, a, sh a shallower plant or, the, or a, a lower growing plant, a shorter plant. All these have the potential to grow quite tall. The Madania can be trimmed back, no problem, to help accentuate this triangular shape. The other plants will have to have their leaves kind of peeled back. You can't really trim them like a normal kind of stem plant. So that's something that I'll run through Nicole and James with when they come to maintaining the tank in the longer term. But we need some shorter plants around here, so let's see what we've got. Let's There was some, suppose, can you get some Sagittaria subulata? Yeah. Let's get uh, four pots. Yeah. Thanks, mate. So, here we've got some Cryptocoryne Willisii. This won't get much taller, it'll get a little, little bit taller than what you, what you see here. And this is a great low maintenance plant. It doesn't really carpet, it does very, very slowly, but not enough to kind of worry about and take over the tank. Definitely easy to keep in control, but really low maintenance, quite slow growing, but adds a nice kind of fresh green color and texture. And again, it's quite a vertical natured plant, so you can see a distinct theme going on here. Oh no, you got you got some open pots. Oh right. yeah, for instant impact. Thanks, mate. Sorry, I didn't make that clear. actually find this process really therapeutic, just the constant planting, just, just doing the same thing over and over again, going to like a, like a meditation. Not quite so relaxing when you know hundreds of people are watching you, <laughs> but even so, you can still get into a bit of a zone, which is lovely. sprigs of the Mandania, we just pop them in to add a little bit more texture there. I'm just waiting for James to come with some Sagittaria. And have you got any... Um... Oh, no, it's back. Oh, that's, so that's perfect. Yeah. That's actually better, thank you. Yeah. Okay, speed prep. How quick can George prepare a pot of plants? So we go one, two, Okay, we're going to plant now Liliopsis brasiliensis. There we go, five seconds. <laughs> so, this is a slow growing, actually, a low energy um, carpeting plant. You don't actually need CO2 with this. I've got it growing in my Tropica Aquacube with no filter, no additional CO2 injection, low lighting. The only thing it does get is a regular water change and um, Tropical soil, so it's getting its food from there. But it's actually a really attractive 
carpeting plant and it's going to mix again up with these textures of the crypt and you can hopefully see a theme going on here all vertical element textures all green fresh green colors okay i'll just show the guys how i prep a pot so all tropical plants here as you can see the labeling system very easy to understand You've got the full scientific name there liliopsis brasiliensis the number refers to the price product group easy means it's an easy plant they also do medium and advanced and then we have where it goes in the aquascope so it's a foreground plant there and then we have finally the product code 040 so fun fact hygrophila uh, cyamensis 53b is 53b and that's why it's called that there is actually another species of hygrophila cyamensis that's why they had to add that 53b code fun facts <laughs> No so, at all. Sorry, to prepare the pot, split the rock in two halves. You can actually gently pull away the majority of the plant mass from that. There we have our plants. And now we can separate these into individual portions, like so. And we grab our tweezers. Pop them in your tweezers like this. And then we just gently insert into the soil. Simple as that. So when I first started the hobby, I didn't even know that you had to take the plants out of the pot. I just put the pots in, in the tank. Actually, my first ever experience with aquarium plants, they weren't even aquarium plants, they were non-aquatic. They were actually house plants, sold as aquarium plants. So needless to say, I failed, got loads of algae, but I'm quite a persistent kind of character. So rather than just give up, I thought, why am I failing? Let's learn something from this. And sure enough, I learned, you know, that I had non-aquatic plants. And then I bought a book on aquarium plants. It was actually the Denele Guide to a Successful Aquarium or, or something like this. I can't remember the actual name of the book. It was actually more of a, a product guide for Denele, but it did talk about the basics of having a planted tank. It talked about lighting. It talked about substrate systems, CO2, liquid fertilizers all the things that are necessary to keep the plant tank healthy. So that was my kind of first entry into learning about plant aquariums. And then shortly after that, I discovered the Nature Aquarium World Book One from Takashi Amano. And that was really a game changer for me. That was, I knew literally after reading that, you know, opening that book for the first time, that the you know, Nature Aquarium aquascaping was going to be the thing for me and uh, here I am now rambling about it to hundreds of people online and uh, if someone told me about then I'll be doing this I would have probably been one really scared and, and two really surprised so it just shows you know how far you can go with something if you're really if you're really focused and driven but I am rambling aren't I <laughs> <laughs> apologies So I think we're nearly there. So the, the soil is quite shallow here. I'm hopeful that the uh, Liliopsis won't mind that too much. And finally, we have our epiphyte plants. So we'll do them in a second. Let's just do one more. Oh no, we can do we can do some more down there actually. I didn't spot that gap. There's a load of gap, there's a big gap here, isn't there? So let's split these up. Show some love guys, hit that like button. 410 watching. Great stuff. Good mate. Oh, 50 on here as well. That's good. Sorry, my back's still going on there. Uh, <laughs> you still catch boobs, isn't you? <laughs> Sorry, bum. My bum's a bigger than this one. James? Yep. 
Do you reckon you could dig out like a small... No, in fact, I've got another idea. That's no problem. Don't worry. Okay, that's the main planting done in the soil. Let's have a bit of a spray. It's important that we don't let the plants dry out, especially if they've adapted to their underwater growth. I think most of these are still in their immersed state, so they're used to growing out in the water in the greenhouses. Um, but you might, when you buy your plants, you might buy them in their underwater state, their submerged state, and that makes them a lot more sensitive to drying out, so do bear this in mind. Okay, so on to our other African species here. We've got the beautiful Bulbitis hudulotii. Well, I'm Try saying that after a few beers. We'll just pop that in there. And I am a massive fan of just wedging plants in gaps. No need for glue, no need for string. Just pop them in and they soon find their own, their own way. There as well. Now we have some Anubius, I believe, hopefully. So uh, the Bulbitis here is a, a medium category plant, so it does ideally need CO2 and moderate to high lighting, although it can grow in a non-CO2 tank. I have actually witnessed this myself. But what we've got here is the Nubius Petite, which is very much an easy plant. In fact, it actually does seem to do better in a lower lighting where it's going to have less risk of getting algae. So again, we're just wedging those plants in gently. Got any mosses in stock? Yeah. Uh, Which one would you like? What would you fancy? Have you got... I don't know how weeping would do. You got any weeping? Yeah. Someone just recognised me tattoos. Pretty <laughs> <laughs> nice. I love Anubias. Yeah. Final Epiphyte, apart from the moss, which we're getting as we speak, we have some of the beautiful Buca Balandra Kelly Gang. Oh, a little bit more Anubias here. So loads are great places to just wedge these pieces of these plants in. What will happen over the coming weeks, the rhizome is going to grow bigger. It's actually going to attach itself to the wood and become really secure. You know what, I'm thinking some small piece of dragonstone might complement it around here. Yeah, do you want to get uh, just a selection? Thanks. Yeah, I think I'll look good. I've got normal dragonstone, I've got dark dragonstone as well, which would be prefer. Do you think, what do you think would look better with the... I don't know. I think the lighter one too. The lighter. What's the word, lighter one stone? It goes quite, um, it does change colour considerably underwater as well, doesn't it? Yeah, really? yeah. I really hope that wood doesn't float. It's too. Okay. Have you got any glue? Yeah, I've got Ricky alone. Got you glue. Glue. <laughs> <laughs> Not even tying my own shoelaces, let alone. <laughs>
Warm in here, isn't it? It's really hot. Yeah. It's really cool, isn't it? Yeah, I saw that. John put Jojo on this morning. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, that's the planting done. Now I'm just looking at it. This is a really good. This is a really good learning point. So you think you finished your upper escape, especially when you're under pressure like this. You want to kind of, you know, you, you just have to sometimes just take a step back, forget that you kind of a lot of people are watching you, and just kind of you and the escape, and just consider how can I make that look better. So my immediate, um, my immediate thought is, I don't like this barrier here between the soil and the sand, that looks really unnatural. And I don't like this very linear kind of look here, it's very kind of flat. It's not very naturalistic. It's, it's really in contrast with the really quite complex textures that we've going on here. So what we can do there is quite simple. I've got some lovely pieces of dragonstone here, and this is the perfect colour to complement the, the gravel and the sand. And we can create our own little border there and that's going to that's also going to hopefully prevent the soil from migrating onto the gravel in front. And then we can make a little bit more of a complexity, a little bit more kind of um, what's the word tension. At the moment, it's like a nice smooth kind of flowing pattern. We actually want to create a little bit more drama, a little bit more tension with it. So let's add a few more pieces of dragonstone. So when we look at the dragonstone, this is another learning point, you can see it's got a natural, what we call strata, these natural lines that are a result of the, you know, the, the geological kind of processes that this has been exposed to over you know, hundreds of thousands of years probably. And we can use these lines to create a more naturalistic appearance and we can actually line up the lines with the main focal point. So the main focal point is this bulb is here, it's roughly in a, a rule of thirds along the length of the aquascape. So if we actually deliberately line that up, it hopefully will look a little bit more natural. And my only minor concern here is that the dragonstone is quite dirty. So we do need to be mindful of filling the aquarium up quite slowly. Otherwise that's going to really potentially cloud. In fact, that's a little bit shallow. Let's, let's swap those out for a bit. this one in instead. But we're still using the same principle of the strata, but we just have a bit more of an impactful stone here. So this is like a 3D jigsaw puzzle, basically. And the aim is to try and make it look as natural as possible. So there isn't a clear solution, but there is a, a way to make it look more natural. And sometimes if you're not experienced, it can be a little daunting and it will take you a long time. But just like anything in this life, you know, the more you practice something, the easier it becomes. I don't like this piece, it's too flat, it's not in keeping with the other textures on there. <clears throat> this is a different colour. You can't tell what I'm feeling. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> so use this piece here to act as a barrier again for this area of the soil border with the gravel. Big 
Pero tiene coca de Biden, ¿no? Okay. Now we can do our final. Oh, got some moss to put in. So, has this been when you're running yet? Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. So, top tip: super glue and moss. Only use the smallest dab of super glue that you can get away with, because it does look ugly when it goes under the water. It will turn a white colour. And then eventually, this is weeping moss, so under good conditions, it will actually start to form teardrop-like sorry, Shine. shapes, uh, droop down over the wood and look really attractive. It is quite, it's not the easiest moss in the world to grow. It will survive in like a low energy setup, but to make it really thrive, get this compact and brighter green growth, you need CO2 and moderate lighting at least, I would suggest. I'm going to start getting some water ready yeah. to fill. Have you got a red colander? I was going to say, boy. <laughs> I've got a blue one at home. Okay. <laughs> Didn't bring it today. Travel light. <laughs> Lots of people saying the stone's totally transformed it. In a good way? Yeah, in a good way. Taxi home. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So Have you normally fill up the tank from scratch? I just filter floss when I have a Yeah, filter floss or like a trophica bag. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, whatever. We just need to do it slowly, that's, yeah, the, that's yeah. the main thing. What I'm going to do is we'll stop the live stream fairly soon. I'll do a cheerio to everyone, mm -hmm. and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll once it's full and cleared, I'll do an extra bit for the vlog, and, yeah. then, and then people can watch the, the end of the vlog and they'll see what it looks like. Good thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Let's say cheerio. Just in front. Do you want to cut a bit close-ups? Yeah. Do a bit of B-roll. <laughs> Someone starts singing some. 
Come on, smooth angles. Definitely need to get myself one of those handheld jobbies. Oh, a nice little gadget. Yeah. That's a needling. Thanks, mate. Get an Amazon affiliate? No, nah, I'm not, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a sea cam. Sea cam. We're all wearing mascot t-shirts today, apart from you, George. Yeah, me and Yuri's got a massive fold. No, we haven't. <laughs> <laughs> No, I love Yuri's, I love Moss Pond and stuff, but do you know, it's, it's funny because it's not my hobby. Yeah. I don't wear the Moss Cotton when I'm working, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually wear it, you know, quite a lot, but yeah. not, not when I'm not work when I'm working I tend to I tend to wear my own sort of plain stuff. Especially for photography, like dark stuff with no logo mm. is better for photography, especially with aquariums because you get the reflection. Oh true, yeah. Yeah. Top tips, you see. <laughs> Someone says the tank on the right's good as well. Champion thanks. Yeah, this is my tank, everybody. <laughs> this is the so Highline 85. The photo. <laughs> oh, look at that. No. <laughs> Thug life. That's not for you, George. Yeah, I'm sure we can steal one off Tropica's website. I can, I can send you one off. Quite a nice one, that's at least. Yeah, actually. I'll send you it. Something good. Um, oh, thug life, that, isn't it? <laughs> it does look like a bit of a naughty boy. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Okay, right, let's um, wrap it up for the live stream. Right. <clears throat> okay, thanks so much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed that. Quite a quick workshop, and that's because all the plants were pre prepared, had some excellent materials to use in a beautiful aquarium. So, I want to give a shout out to Awaze, I want to give a shout out to Horizon Aquatics, of course, for inviting me here. A shout out to you know everyone that support supported this project, to Geordie Scaber, who's behind the camera right now. Hey. Um, I've got anyone, Stuart, Stuart <laughs> who's also been snapping away, and of course, to Nicole and James. Thank you, everyone. Um, don't forget you can watch this once it's been filled and hopefully cleared by the time I go home. I will record some footage of it which I will add onto the end of the shop tour vlog here from here at Horizon Aquatic. So if you haven't subscribed to me already make sure you're subscribed with notifications and you'll get notified when that video goes live and then you'll see what exactly this looks like full of water and hopefully looking really good. So thanks for watching, really appreciate it. You take care. Keep on skating. Cheerio.